start with the second uh, part of our session with Alexandros Mazarikis Tenyan, who uh, is speaking about the practices in our oracles. It's a question. It's a question, <laughs> it's as you will see. Um, many of you might know, but perhaps this is the best place to discuss such uh, problems. Um, because from my problem concerning Oropos, which I wanted to uh, discuss here in this um, conference, is uh, despite the fact that we have excavated an extensive area uh, of uh, 1,600 square meters uh, with 40 buildings of the early Iron Age, there is no clear evidence for some public cult uh, practice or activities within the area uh, we excavated, which is uh, uh, a bit of uh, a bit peculiar. But there is evidence for different types of cult practices, and I will discuss some of these. Very quickly, I want to remind that Oropos uh, is the later name of the area, mentioned first by Herodotus, but uh, it is today, I think, beyond doubt that uh, the pre-classical uh, site was uh, Homeric Grea, we have discussed this uh, uh, elsewhere. Now the area, as I said, excavated is uh, quite vast uh, and uh, we can reconstruct a uh, kind of um, uh, settlement uh, which we could classify in between a komi and a dense urban plan, that is a partial occupation of land and low uh, architectural uh, density. Uh, in, so it's an uh, in-between uh, situation, uh, though we are missing parts uh, as um, some areas have not been excavated in between. There are uh, at least six major architectural phases, as I said, 40 early Iron Age buildings and several also edifices of the archaic period, uh, which are not uh, mentioned here. So in a period of 60 years, Roughly, we have every 10 years remodeling, reconstruction of um, buildings. You see here some of these um, phases, the second phase of the mid-eighth, uh, third quarter of the eighth, uh, and then the, the third phase. Uh, and uh, what we see is, uh, I highlight them with yellow, uh, is or brown, uh, is that uh, as we go in time, we see that in some areas, the highlighted areas uh, where edifices um, um, are mentioned and shown, may have been uh, related to some sort of cult activities. These are the uh, highlighted uh, areas. And also in the later green phase, we have also a lot of such activity going on. Um, we will try to clarify what kind of cult activity uh, is this one. To get an idea of, about the settlement, as uh, we can reconstruct it, uh, reconstruct it through th these 3D reconstructions, uh, we have um, various compounds, uh, which are some of them uh, uh, separated by or enclosed by uh, peribolous walls. And within the peripoloi, there are several buildings. In the central quarter, several buildings of this kind have been excavated and elsewhere we have uh, tried to reconstruct this model of uh, oikoi, uh, which consists of several buildings and uh, um, which could uh, be, in one sense, compared with uh, mostly the Homeric oikos in the Odyssey. Um, within uh, this oikos, the Homeric oikos, we have some hints about cult activities around an altar inside the Ercos of um, Odysseus' house. And uh, this could be the case. Now, uh, to be uh, sure that we are speaking of a settlement and not an uh, uh, area with cult activities, first of all, we have a lot of uh, child burials scattered all around these uh, buildings. And then we have evidence which is typically associated with um, household activities uh, such as a lot of loop weights and spindle rolls. We have also uh, 
main traces about uh, iron working mostly in this uh, area and also um, pottery production with the presence of uh, kilns. So it's a multifunctional area, but basically uh, it's a settlement as the majority of the finds show. Now, uh, let's go inside one of these compounds to see how they are arranged with various buildings. And the question which have been discussed elsewhere is, what is the function of all these buildings? Uh, it seems that uh, some of them were more important, like this building Theta, uh, which uh, may have uh, been either a kind of a chief's house or perhaps a building housing more uh, uh, activities like uh, symposia of a more communal nature due to the finds, which are uh, distinct from the rest of the buildings. Uh, it also has some metal finds, which are uh, quite rare in other contexts. Um, but there is one edifice round building six, which is um, uh, associated certainly with cult, cult activities within the compound. And that is a kind of small chapel with a bench, uh, which um, the hearth in the middle, which we can almost certainly identify with a sort of uh, chapel uh, uh, within uh, the family unit, I could say. Now, at the very end of this, um, uh, this period of um, occupation here, we have this so-called heron, as uh, we have uh, dubbed it, uh, which um, consists uh, of various uh, cultic areas and a kind of cenotaph, as I suggested, perhaps a person who died uh, at sea, as there is a boat model also among the smashed uh, objects around this cenotaph with a stele. It has also a stele, as you can see, uh, which was standing upright. Uh, this uh, heron stands on top of these two buildings, um, Yota Yota Alpha, uh, one of which, the earliest, uh, could be identified with the house of a certain Pithalimos uh, from a very early inscription found on this uh, um, disc, stone disc. Perhaps it's the uh, either he himself, Pithalimos, or uh, a descendant of his uh, who uh, was honored in this heron uh, when the two buildings, uh, the superimposed, were uh, destroyed finally. Comparison with the, um, this idea of a, a heron cult, of course, we can address uh, opposite the coast with Eretria, which has, as we know, um, very close ties with Oropos, uh, cultural ties from very early times. Uh, and uh, that is why Oropos is included in this section of sanctuaries of uh, Euboea because of its uh, cultural, um, uh, let's say, connection um, with um, the opposite coast rather than with Attica. So uh, this um, uh, idea of uh, cult um, of heroes, uh, uh, seems to be well uh, established in the opposite coast, uh, as we know by this uh, later cult of Narcissus uh, uh, in the area of Oropos mentioned by Strabo. In the other area of the excavation, the West Quarter, there is uh, similar evidence for cult activities. Uh, in uh, uh, area one, there is one evidence, uh, uh, very scanty, uh, about the presence of a cylindrical structure that you see here, uh, which uh, could have been an altar. It belongs to the two later phases of the place. It has two phases, the one on top of the other. Uh, you can see them clearly in the masonry style. And uh, it could be a kind of um, uh, raised uh, altar, hollow in the middle, uh, uh, seeming, uh, which can be compared with the similar structure um, in uh, the sanctuary of Apollo Daphnephoros at Eretria. Uh, further to the west, in area two, there is uh, quite intriguing evidence about cult activities uh, within some of the buildings, uh, within buildings uh, 34, 35 especially, uh, and uh, building uh, M, which is building 40, uh, as you see in the plan, and you see it uh, to the right. Um, in the end of the 8th century, 
there is therefore evidence uh, for uh, renewing uh, of uh, growing, let's say, activities, uh, cultic activities, both in the central and the west quarter. And in this west quarter, we have this building, uh, oval building M, uh, which uh, was provided with a stone platform upon which uh, uh, several vases were smashed on top, and there is evidence for burning as these, the stones were uh, whitened by the fire, we believe. And also an area with an upper uh, a circular area, of, perhaps for libations. Uh, there was also um, sort of um, small uh, perfume vases which were um, alongside the extremities of this um, uh, platform dating uh, to the transition of the geometric to the archaic period, like this Enochoe. Um, this uh, situation, uh, we believe, uh, represents a kind of um, burying uh, after a kind of ritual where everything was smashed, a burying of the building, um, which um, continued to be visible for quite a long time. Uh, and I will tell you just in a moment why we believe this. Uh, this reminds us of similar ritual activities taking place, for instance, in Kalapodi in Fokida, uh, where the late geometric temple was uh, buried ritually uh, in order to construct the large south uh, uh, temple seven, um, and also the much earlier situation of the ritual burial of the so-called uh, Lefkandi Heron. Uh, so you see the situation with building uh, M40 and the uh, nearby building 35 is one of the largest of the settlement together with building Theta that we saw in the beginning. And there uh, we also uh, believe that there is evidence for some cult activities. The first phase of this building um, doesn't uh, insinuate something of the kind, uh, just uh, weaving activities, uh, which are of course uh, different from the rest of the settlement uh, as the uh, study has shown. Uh, but the building 34, which follows, was in a way consecrated by uh, sort of uh, some ritual acts for securing it. Uh, uh, and there were sort of sacrifices, libation sacrifices taking place um, around it uh, during the 7th century, mostly, uh, in order to keep it uh, uh, standing. And this was the only building which seems to have continued to be uh, standing in that area in the 7th century, but in the courtyard that was formed in front of this building, between building M and the oval building uh, 34, there was a tabled courtyard which uh, yielded, among other, miniature cotile, which presumably suggests some form of cult activities taking place. Uh, while uh, in this uh, area, uh, this um, later building may have had a so-called peristyle, uh, there is a, a heart of peculiar nature, and there were uh, a lot of also iron bits, uh, very corroded, uh, which suggest uh, metal finds also present in this building. These uh, um, are the only areas where some form of cult activity is attested. Uh, uh, but this is intertwined very often with uh, normal domestic activities, and it's very difficult to separate uh, these uh, two uh, activities. In the archaic period, 7th and 6th centuries, the green areas, uh, we have a change a lot, a uh, change in the uh, form of the settlement, uh, which uh, changes completely. Uh, and uh, uh, we believe that at least in the two extremities of the settlement, that uh, I mentioned the uh, that is the area the west the central quarter and the uh, area two of the west quarter. There is some ongoing cult activities uh, taking becoming uh, going into the at least the seventh century, if not the sixth in the western area. So uh, on the middle there is a, a civic building of ambiguous nature, but probably not of cultic nature. Um, what happened then? Uh, the site was um, abandoned due to the inundation of the end of the archaic period, as we have uh, 
said uh, in other places, uh, and the settlement shifted from where it was and uh, renamed, and uh, the new town of Oropos was created, uh, some uh, 500 meters to the uh, east. Uh, in Oropos, the problem uh, seems to be and in um, about the, the cults of classical Oropos and Hellenistic Oropos, we know very little apart that we are sure that the main cult was that of Halia, uh, the nymph Halia, um, which uh, is attested um, in the area, uh, which could uh, have some relation with the telchines and metalworking and could be related to these earlier activities of metalworking uh, further to the west. But uh, uh, then, um, what, what uh, can we say if we compare the situation of Oropos, where the ambiguity um, uh, is all over about cult activities, uh, which seem to have a kind of um, uh, an, a more uh, uh, restricted nature and not a kind of um, the public nature that uh, is uh, observed in other sanctuaries, and in other places which develop into sanctuaries from settlements. And one such case is the sanctuary of Apollo Daphnephoros uh, at Eretria, where uh, from this kind of similar cult activities, I would say, like Oropos, we develop into a much more uh, public uh, uh, and uh, clearly identifiable uh, cult, uh, public cult, with the construction of building two, the Ekatompedon. Uh, perhaps, we will see this, uh, that's why I, I posed the question at uh, Marinthos, but we have to wait a few years until uh, the earlier levels uh, are excavated. Uh, my impression is perhaps, again, a settlement developing into a major sanctuary. But in other places, like Oropos, abandonment, sometimes earlier, sometimes later, without the acquirement of uh, public uh, religious building, um, while... Um, at Eretria and elsewhere, there are these ambiguous buildings. Uh, I can't go into details, like Edifice 150 at Eretria, uh, Building 1 uh, at uh, Pithecuse, uh, this oval building at, uh, of the geometric period at uh, Vidlaturi in Kimi, uh, which reminds us of similar ambiguous situations of buildings which are related to with cult activities but cannot be classified as temples, and they could uh, serve also for uh, habitation um, or for uh, grouping um, uh, kins uh, together uh, for uh, practicing uh, some cult activities or meals uh, uh, in common and eating and drinking. Um, and I would uh, conclude here by saying that perhaps what we observe at Oropos, uh, uh, like in other places, the ones that I just showed you, and uh, especially the area of the so-called sacred house at the academy in Athens, to take only examples from Attica, um, is that perhaps uh, uh, the cults that uh, developed into the early archaic period, mostly in Oropos, seem to have some relationship uh, with uh, what had preceded and the trend to uh, keep alive some memory uh, of what had preceded, who had preceded, but in a rather um, uh, family, let's say, is keeping it in a rather family level. And uh, the idea that these are memory scapes, uh, according to uh, this definition, um, like uh, the Academy or elsewhere, is perhaps the best um, um, explanation for the presence of these cults, which did not develop into uh, public cults, but perhaps would have never developed in such uh, cults because uh, public cults because they were uh, family oriented thank you <laughs>